how did I start my side hustle? It starts with a need and an obstacle. For example, I got out of the Marine Corps and I needed a job. What are the obstacles to this job? Well, I need a good resume. I probably need a more productive network so I can get internal referrals. And I probably need some industry relevant or domain specific certifications. So one thing follows another, you work your way through these things and you clear one or more obstacles. You fill the need, you earn the certification, you build a good resume, you meet the right people, you get a job. Somebody notices your success, somebody that shares that need. They may be going through something similar to you and they see you, whether you post it online or if they're a personal friend and you're just having a conversation out somewhere, they see your success and they want to emulate it. They share that need, they need to clear that same obstacle, and they ask you, how'd you get that done? My friends, on the journey from regular dude to side hustle, business owner, content creator, all of the wacky things, influencer, this is inflection point number one as I'm recalling it from my history. That request for friendly advice. That is where you start down the slippery slope. At first, when that request comes in, it's no big deal. And if you're anything like me, you're flattered. You may have just accomplished that thing. You just earned that data analytics certification, if you're in my neck of the, neck of the woods in my business, and somebody asks you, how'd you do that? Can you show me? You're flattered. It's an appeal to authority, and suddenly you're the authority. If you're in a new domain or you're in a new venture, you're doing something different, you've been in the military for umpteen years, and now you're going into a new uh, industry, and somebody says, teach me how to do that, it's a new thing. It's a flattering thing. And instinctively, you want to help them. That request may come in an email. It may be verbal. You run into somebody at church. They say, hey, I saw you got accomplished this or you got hired or, you know, show me how to do that. It may be a DM on your favorite social media platform. But people want to emulate your success. They see you succeeding publicly and they ask you, how do I do that? At first, no big deal. It's one request, it's two requests, word gets out, you're doing great things, and it becomes kind of a trickle. More and more people start asking you, how'd you do this? As you have more and more successes, you clear multiple obstacles, you address different needs that other people share. Eventually those requests don't become, how'd you do that one thing? How did you pass that test? How did you get that certification, how'd you get that job? It becomes a request to be more like you. Now they really see you as a success story and they're no longer asking, how do I clear that one obstacle? They're asking, how do I be more like you? What's the path? They wanna follow your journey. They're now asking you for mentorship, sometimes overtly. And that implies a much deeper commitment. It's not just responding to one message. They're asking to have almost a relationship with you. Again, it's flattering at first to be in a new job, a new venture, a new domain, and have someone call you a mentor and ask you to teach them, not just give a piece of advice, but guide them along the path. It's flattering. And so instinctively, you just want to help them out. So you say yes one time, and then you say yes a couple of times. Your influence grows. You, maybe you start getting more and more followers. What was 500 followers on LinkedIn is now a couple of thousand. So more and more people are seeing your success if you're out and proud about it. And everybody, every individual person thinks it's no big deal. 
The ones that aren't asking for mentorship, they say, hey, can we jump on a 15 minute call? They're sitting there thinking, hey, everybody's got 15 minutes. Why not? What they don't know is that now you're getting five, 10, 15 requests a day. Those 15 minutes start to add up. Those five, 10, 15 minutes it takes to respond to a, a DM, it adds up quickly. Suddenly that favor, that thing that you're happy to respond to becomes a task. It's something that you've got to do every day because those requests are coming consistently. The task becomes an event. It's something that you have to schedule time for. Now you have message response time or social media time that you're trying to budget into your schedule. That event quickly becomes a chore. When those requests start stacking up and you can't respond to them all and suddenly you have a buffer building up, oh, I've got 10 people that I've got to answer tomorrow when I've got some time, you start building up social debt. It starts working on your guilt. And before you know it, if you're anything like me, you suddenly find yourself at some sort of family event pecking away on your phone and your wife says, what are you doing? And you say, well, I've got to help out some random corporal from 1st Marine Division who eas six months ago and he can't find a job. And your wife says, for Christ's sake, put the damn phone down. You're at your son's baseball game. That's when that chore becomes a burden. It starts creating friction. You have a limited amount of time. If you're anything like me, you've got a nine to five job. Eventually you've got a side hustle, but you have family commitments. Your kids are still around. They still like you. As long as you don't play with your phone too much at their baseball games. But it starts to weigh on your guilt. It starts to create friction and it starts to become an economic decision. You have a limited amount of time that's not already budgeted for the job that pays the bills. And the remainder of that time has to be shared between family, which hopefully is your first priority, and these other commitments. Suddenly you have commitments to people that you've never met, but it weighs on your guilt. It weighs on your sense of fairness. You say, I helped one guy, now I gotta help them all. You know, it's like finding all the Pokemons. At some point you start to triage. You only have so much time, your first priority is the nine to five job or family, you know, one, one A and one B, nine to five family. And then priority two is all of the other stuff you got to do. And you start to feel like guiding people and helping them clear the obstacles that you've cleared is a priority, but eventually you run out of time. You got to sleep sometime. You got to eat. You got to do all these other things. You start categorizing. And that starts bringing you towards another inflection point. You start figuring out who's in my tribe. Who can I help? There's only so much time, so I'm going to help family. I'm going to help personal friends, people that I know in real life. I'm going to help other veterans. And all these other people, whatever time is left, maybe I can answer your message and help you out. My friends, that is enough for today. That is where it really starts to get difficult and you have to make some key decisions. Next, we'll start talking about when you start making real economic decisions and the first time somebody offers you money to buy your time. But that's all I've got for today. Semper Fidelis, and I'll talk to you later.